Greetings to one and all. I welcome you all to the presentation on the topic nuclear force and radioactivity by group 5 of second DC Max. First of all, I would like to thank our faculty advisor Dr. Pius Agustin for such an opportunity. Then I would like to thank all my friends and family who have supported us for this completion of this uh, presentation. So let, let's get started. First of all, I would like to introduce all the presenters. Anthony Salvin, Anjana Sajish, Kribajos, Mohit Kumar uh, and myself Jisha Jutsan. The content will be as follows. Nuclear force and introduction presented by Anthony Salvin followed by discovery of nuclear force by Anjana Sajish. Then properties of nuclear force by Kribajos and followed by introduction of nuclear radioactivity by Mohit Kumar and will be completed by Jisha on the topic historical background and other facts of radioactivity. Now I invite Anthony to continue the presentation. Nuclear force. Nuclear force, also known as nuclear interaction. This is because there is a strong interaction in the mechanism responsible for the strong nuclear force and is one of the four known fundamental mechanisms. Neutrons and protons, both nucleons, force almost identically. The nuclear force binds nucleons into atomic nuclei. The strong nuclear force pulls together protons and neutrons in the nucleus. At very small distance, only such those inside the nucleus. The strong force overcomes the electrical repulsion of protons from blowing the nucleus apart. The original idea was that the force is caused by the exchange of particles lighter than the nucleons known as mesons. Thus, this idea gave rise to birth of new subfield of modern physics. Mesons are the members of families of subatomic particles composed of quarks and anticorks. Mesons are sensitive to strong force. The fundamental interaction that binds the component of the nucleus by governing the behavior of the constituent quark. The range of nuclear force is short by few femtometer which decreases rapidly. The nuclear force is powerfully attractive between nucleus at a distance about 1 femtometer. 1 femtometer means 1.0 into 10 raised to minus 15 meter. But it decreases rapidly to insignificance at distance beyond about 2.5 femtometer at distance less than 0 0.7 femtometer. The nuclear force becomes rep repulsive. The strong nuclear force at extremely short range, it is stronger than electrostatic repulsion and allows protons to stick together in a nucleus even though their charges repel each other. Thus, I am concluding my topic and I am inviting my friend Anjana to join with us. Now we are going to discuss about the discovery of nuclear force and the Mason theory of nuclear force. So, uh, let us define what is nuclear force. Nuclear forces are the strong forces that hold particles called protons and neutrons together inside the nucleus. These nuclear forces was one of the main topics of physics research in the 20th century. In order to explain the stability of an atom, we have to consider the existence of fundamental force called nuclear force. In 1932, Sir James Chadwick discovered the neutron. So, inside the nucleus there are two kinds of particles. One is the neutron and the other is the proton. The neutrons are neutral particles while the protons are positively charged. Since the protons are positively charged particles, they repel one another. So, how can so many positively charged particles exist inside the nucleus and in a tiny amount of space? So, to overcome the repulsive forces between the protons and to bind the protons and neutrons into a very small nuclear space, there should be a strong attractive force between the neutrons and protons. Therefore, the concept of a new strong nuclear force was introduced. In 1935, the first successful theory for this new force was developed by the Japanese physicist Hideki Yukawa. 
He suggested that the nucleons would exchange particles between each other and this mechanism would create the force. Yukawa gave what is today known as the Yukawa's theory of nuclear force or the Mason theory of nuclear force. The Mason theory, what Yukawa basically said is this. He said that the nuclear force exists as a result of exchange of particles. It means that the neutrons and protons are continuously emitting or absorbing another particle which is known as the pi mason. He said that the neutrons and protons are continuously emitting or absorbing another particle and whenever the nearby neutrons and protons emit and absorb particle then uh, this leads to the effect of force which is known as the nuclear force. The analogy of this kind of example can be shown by two boys playing with balls. So uh, let us suppose two boys playing with balls. If the boys throw the balls at each other, they move backward and when they catch the balls thrown at them, their backward momentum increases. This method of exchanging balls has the same effect as a repulsive force acting between the boys. And uh, if the boys snatch the balls from each other's hands, the result will be equivalent to an attractive force acting between them. The nature of the nuclear force is the same. If we imagine that one of the boys is a neutron and the other is a proton, then we can say that the neutron and proton are exchanging some kind of particle in between them and the exchange of the particle is creating the effect of a force and that force is holding both of them together. This is a rough way of explaining the Mason theory of nuclear force. Here, Yukawa basically said that the effect of a nuclear force is a result of exchange of particles and this particles he named as pi Mason. So, uh, the particles which are continuously being exchanged between neutrons and protons are known as pi Mason. And there can be different kinds of pi Mason. There can be positively charged pi Mason, negatively charged pi Mason and neutral pi Mason. These pi mesons are also known as pions. So these pi mesons and pions are continuously exchanged between neutrons and protons to create the effect of the nuclear force. Now if we look at the nature of the transformation that takes place, what happens is that let us suppose a proton particle creates a pion. Then we end up getting a pion plus and a neutron in its place. While if a neutron particle absorbs a pion plus, then it becomes a proton. And in this transformation that is continuously happening between neutrons and protons, we can get an exchange of particles which gives the effect of a force. So this theory is known as the exchange of particles theory or Mason theory. So this is how the nuclear forces exist inside the nucleus. Neutrons and protons continuously emit and absorb these kind of pion particles and if they have neighbors then they continuously emit and absorb with their neighbors thereby playing a game of catch-catch creating the effect of a bond between them which is bond uh, both attractive and repulsive. So uh, this is known as the Mason theory of nuclear forces. Next we are discussing about the topic the properties of nuclear force. The first property nuclear forces are the strongest forces in nature. They are 10 raised to 38 times stronger than the gravitational force, 10 square times stronger than the electrostatic force and 10 raised to 13 times stronger than the weak forces. The four fundamental forces of nature are gravitational force, electrostatic force, weak nuclear force uh, and strong nuclear force. Among these four as the name suggests the strongest one is the strong nuclear force. Hence, it is the strongest force. Breakage of bond will also release a lot of energy. Next, the second property. Nuclear forces are short-range forces. Short-range means they are applicable within the distance of order of 10 raised to minus 15 meter. Uh, note that 10 raised to minus 15 meter equal to 1 femtometer. This distance can also be called a Fermi. Also at greater distances, these forces are negligible. Next, the third property of nuclear force. They are basically attractive forces between nucleons. Uh, that is between proton and proton, proton and neutron and neutron and neutron. Only when the distance between the nucleon is less than 0.7 Fermi, it becomes repulsive in nature.
when we go through the given graph we can found that the nuclear force is most powerful at distances of around 1 femtometer also from distances of around 1 to 2.5 femtometer the distance the force decreases exponentially also from uh, for distances greater than 2.5 femtometer it is almost negligible uh, and finally for distances less than 0.7 femtometer it reverses in sign and suddenly become repulsive in nature uh, this repulsive nature of nuclear force is very necessary to avoid the collapse of the nuclei if the nuclear force is not repulsive at extremely short distances the particles would uh, collapse into themselves so this repulsive force is very necessary to avoid the collapse of the nuclei next uh, going through the fourth property nuclear force do not depend on the charge on the nucleon that is they are charge independent it was found that nuclear force between two proton is same as that between a proton and a neutron or between two neutron also generally the force is attractive mm. next property nuclear forces are non central and also non conservative forces um, okay this is what we covered till now the six properties that is nuclear force is the shortest sh strongest short range force basically attractive charge independent non central and non conservative forces uh, next, I invite uh, Mohit Kumar to continue the presentation. The equilibrium between the neutrons and the protons, thus the core is stable. In stable nuclei, there is a stable proportion of neutrons and protons. Few or more neutrons compared to proton, this equilibrium in the core of the atom is disturbed or uh, I must say gets out of balance and core becomes unstable. Ne uh, neutrons but also protons. Uh, even two, two uh, few or uh, more protons uh, can lead to uh, unstable condition of an atom. So if the core um, becomes unstable it has to do something so that in the near future it can stabilize itself. So that what that's what it does. It decays and uh, it gives out neutrons and this process is called decaying and this process is known, known as decaying uh, the atoms stabilize itself by giving out uh, by giving out neutrons so the unstable atom becomes stable atom in the coming future while giving out neutrons in the process so this whole process is known as decaying and it decays so what is radioactivity during this process of radioactivity uh, the atom uh, which gives out neutrons it emits radiations as you can see the image the radioactive atom gives out radiations and also uh, there is a high amount of energy being released so what is radioactivity so radioactivity dk uh, it has many names so it's the process by which an unstable atomic nucleus loses energy by radiations. So while it is emitting radiations, it's losing energy. It's emitting radiations and in this process, it's giving out energy. So that's what it's decays. So in, uh, during decaying, it emits radiations. And this whole pro process is known as radioactivity. And yeah. So now it's highly hexagonic because uh, uh, it emits large large amount of energy. So hexagonic is uh, accompanied by the uh, release releasing of high amount of energy, and it's statistically random. And it's first order process that occurs with a small amount of mass being converted into energy. Yeah, it has it's relatively a very small mass. It's an atom, so it has a very relatively very negligible uh, amount of mass and. Uh, and then we have the isotopes and the radioactive isotopes. Isotopes are atoms with the same proton number, but uh, different uh, number of neutrons in the in the nucleus. For an example, hydrogen has three uh, isotopes: protium, deuterium, and tritium. Protium has uh, uh, atomic number two, uh, atomic number one, but the deuterium has the two, and uh, and so does tritium has the atomic number as three. So why atomic number three? Because it has two neutrons and one protons. This part of the presentation we will be dealing with historical background and other facts of radioactivity. So the presentation will give you a brief idea on history of radioactivity, its units, its classification into natural and artificial radioactivity and its biological effects as well as others. Okay. 
how it was discovered it was actually discovered by henry becquerel in 1896 as you already know radioactivity is one of the most well known accidental discovery in the history of physics it all started with the discovery of x rays by william conrad rontgen in 1895 after learning about this discovery Becquerel began looking for a connection between the phosphorescence that he had already been investigating and the newly discovered x-rays. Becquerel thought that the phosphorescent uranium salt he had been studying might absorb sunlight and re-emit it as x-rays. To test this idea, Becquerel wrapped photographic plates in black paper and then placed the crystals of uranium salt on the top of it and placed the entire setup in sun. When he developed the plates, he saw an outline of crystals. He thought it as a confirmation of his theory and further tried to investigate on it. On March 1st, he opened the drawer and developed the plates expected to see only a very weak image since due to some climatic issues, he couldn't do a continuous experiment continuously. So he thought that he was only getting a small narrow image but instead the image was very Uh, clear at first he thought that it was an effect of long phosphorescence but later he came to a conclusion that it was uranium that was emitting the radiation thus radioactivity was discovered uh, but uh, even though he discovered it the term radioactive was not coined by him he actually named these waves as becquerel's part of the presentation will be dealing with historical background and other facts of radioactivity So the presentation will give you a brief idea on history of radioactivity its units its classification into natural and artificial radioactivity and its biological effects as well as others okay how it was discovered it was actually discovered by henry becquerel in 1896 as you already know radioactivity is one of the most well known accidental discovery in the history of physics it all started with the discovery of x rays by william conrad rontgen in 1895 after learning about this discovery becquerel began looking for a connection between the phosphorescence that he had already been investigating and the newly discovered x rays Becquerel thought that the phosphorescent uranium salt he had been studying might absorb sunlight and re-emit it as x-rays. To test this idea, Becquerel wrapped photographic plates in black paper and then placed the crystals of uranium salt on the top of it and placed the entire setup in sun. When he developed the plates, he saw an outline of crystals. He thought it as a confirmation of his theory. and further tried to investigate on it on march 1st he opened the drawer and developed the place expected to see only a very weak image since due to some climatic issues he couldn't do a continuous experiment continuously so he thought that he was only getting a small narrow image but instead the image was very uh, clear At first he thought that it was an effect of long phosphorescence but later he came to a conclusion that it was uranium that was emitting the radiation thus radioactivity was discovered uh but uh, even though he discovered it the term radioactive was not coined by him he actually named these waves as becquerel's part of the presentation will be dealing with historical background and other facts of radioactivity So the presentation will give you a brief idea on history of radioactivity its units its classification into natural and artificial radioactivity and its biological effects as well as others okay how it was discovered it was actually discovered by henry becquerel in 1896 as you already know radioactivity is one of the most well known accidental discovery in the history of physics it all started with the discovery of x rays by william conrad rontgen in 1895 after learning about this discovery becquerel began looking for a connection between the phosphorescence that he had already been investigating and the newly discovered x rays Becquerel thought that the phosphorescent uranium salt he had been studying might absorb sunlight and re-emit it as x-rays. To test this idea, Becquerel wrapped photographic plates in black paper and then placed the crystals of uranium salt on the top of it and placed the entire setup in sun. When he developed the plates, he saw an outline of crystals. 
he thought it as a confirmation of his theory and further tried to investigate on it. On March 1st, he opened the drawer and developed the place expected to see only a very weak image since due to some climatic issues he couldn't do uh, continuous experiment continuously. So he thought that he was only getting a small narrow image but instead the image was very uh, clear. At first he thought that it was an effect of long phosphorescence but later he came to a conclusion that it was uranium that was emitting the radiation. Thus radioactivity was discovered. Uh, but uh, even though he discovered it, the term radiative was not coined by him. He actually named these waves as Beckett's part of the presentation will be dealing with historical background and other facts of radioactivity. So, the presentation will give you a brief idea on history of radioactivity, its units, its classification into natural and artificial radioactivity and its biological effects as well as others. How it was discovered? It was actually discovered by Henry Becquerel in 1896. As you already know, radioactivity is one of the most well-known accidental discovery in the history of physics. It all started with the discovery of X-rays by William Conrad Rondigen in 1895. After learning about this discovery, Becquerel began looking for a connection between the phosphorescence that he had already been investigating and the newly discovered X-rays. Becquerel thought that the phosphorescent uranium salt he had been studying might absorb sunlight and re emit it as X rays. To test this idea, Becquerel wrapped photographic plates in black paper and then placed the crystals of uranium salt on the top of it and placed the entire setup in sun. When he developed the plates, he saw an outline of crystals. He thought it as a confirmation of his theory and further tried to investigate on it. On March 1st, he opened the drawer and developed the place expected to see only a very weak image since due to some climatic issues he couldn't do uh, continuous experiment continuously. So he thought that he was only getting a small narrow image but instead the image was very uh, clear. At first he thought that it was an effect of long phosphorescence but later he came to a conclusion that it was uranium that was emitting the radiation. Thus radioactivity was discovered. Uh, but uh, even though he discovered it, the term radioactive was not coined by him. He actually named these waves as Beckett's part of the presentation will be dealing with historical background and other facts of radioactivity. So, the presentation will give you a brief idea on history of radioactivity, its units, its classification into natural and artificial radioactivity and its biological effects as well as others. Okay. How it was discovered? It was actually discovered by Henry Becquerel in 1896. As you already know, radioactivity is one of the most well-known accidental discovery in the history of physics. It all started with the discovery of X-rays by William Conrad Rondigen in 1895. After learning about this discovery, Becquerel began looking for a connection between the phosphorescence that he had already been investigating and the newly discovered X-rays. Becquerel thought that the phosphorescent uranium salt he had been studying might absorb sunlight and re emit it as X rays. To test this idea, Becquerel wrapped photographic plates in black paper and then placed the crystals of uranium salt on the top of it and placed the entire setup in sun. When he developed the plates, he saw an outline of crystals. He thought it as a confirmation of his theory and further tried to investigate on it. On March 1st, he opened the drawer and developed the place expected to see only a very weak image since due to some climatic issues he couldn't do uh, continuous experiment continuously. So he thought that he was only getting a small narrow image but instead the image was very uh, clear. At first he thought that it was an effect of long phosphorescence but later he came to a conclusion that it was uranium that was emitting the radiation. Thus radioactivity was discovered. Uh, 
but uh, even though he discovered it the term radioactive was not coined by him he actually named these waves as becu in 1898 mary curie and pierre curie began to study the strange uranium rays discovered by henry becure they figured out how to measure the intensity of radioactivity and soon found out other radioactive elements like polonium thorium and radium mary curie coined the term radioactivity to describe this new phenomenon and in 1903 mary curie and pierre curie along with henry becquerel shared the nobel prize in physics for their contribution in the field of radioactivity so i have given a hyperlink uh, uh, this will direct to a youtube video which is an animated youtube video on discovery of radioactivity okay now even though they discovered the person who actually separated the new rays into its component were ernest rutherford ernest rutherford studied the effect of electric and magnetic field on radioactive radiation emitted by different radioactive substances he observed that radiation has three types of rays one which deflect towards negative rays second which deflect towards positive plates and the third which remain undeflected so he uh, named these rays as alpha rays beta rays and gamma rays respectively uh, the picture below the uh, below will give is the experimental setup on how he studied this phenomenon okay we can see it like the radioactive substance the radiation coming from the radioactive substance how it get deflected and how it forms on the photographic plates units of radioactivity the si unit of radioactivity is becquerel named after its discoverer henry becquerel becquerel is defined as the number of decays per second or activity from a sample of radioactive nuclei it in symbol sense one uh, becquerel is one decay per second another common uh, commonly used the uh, unit is curie and it is approximately equal to the activity of 1 g of radium uh, there is also an another unit known as rutherford uh, the connection between them is listed here like 1 curie is equal to 3.7 into 10 raised to 10 becquerel and 1 rutherford is equal to 1 mega becquerel which is also equal to 2.703 into 10 raised to minus 5 curie this is a table that shows the uh, connection between the si unit and common units of radioactivity the absorbed dose of radiation the dose equivalent and the exposure so now the classification of radioactivity into natural and artificial radioactivity first one natural radioactivity as you already know from the term itself we can understand what is natural radioactivity the radiation that exists in nature natural radiation is everywhere and it it cannot be avoided it is actually defined as the process of spontaneous disintegration of nucleus of heavy elements with the emission of radiation yes it actually occur in the unstable nucleus which is usually which usually have atomic number greater than 82 and some examples are radium actinium and polonium etc we can see in this picture like the cosmic rays the radioactive soils and rocks our body itself everything has natural radiation now all these elements we can classify all the elements that comes under natural radiation into four series these series are thorium series neptunium series uranium series and actinium series like this is a table that shows the different relationship uh, relations between the four different natural radioactive series like uh, the name the parent element how which is the prominent element in the perspective series and what is the end product after the uh, phenomenon occurs and the how many particles we get lost like we can see that in the 
thorium series we can see that the number of particles losses we lo uh, alpha we have 6 alpha and 4 beta while in neptunian series it is 8 alpha and 5 beta uh, when it is 8 alpha and 6 beta in uranium series and in actinium series it is 7 alpha and 4 beta these are the differences the differences of the number of particles that are lost and the end product also they are also different When now it is time for artificial radioactivity. As the term suggests, it is artificial. It is induced. It is made by us, the man-made radioactivity. And it is the process of using radioact uh, radiation to make a previously stable material radioactivity. Look at this picture. We can see how a neutron is bombarded into a stable nucleus, making it is unstable, causing a chain reaction. This is what is known as artificial radioactivity. It was actually discovered by Irene Juliet Curie and Frederick Juliet Curie in 1934. They shared a Nobel Prize in Chemistry for this discovery. There are some examples of artificial radioactivity are how aluminium and helium react to form phosphorus and a neutrino. Now, so the differences between the natural and artificial radioactivity when one is spontaneous uncontrollable and is only shown by heavy elements the other is non spontaneous can be controlled and can be induced even in light elements the the reason for this is what natural radiation occurs on its own we are not uh, causing it so it uh, it cannot be controlled using any measures and it is uncontrollable while artificial radiation is something that is induced by man it is uh, caused by uh, man so due to which we can control it or induce it and it is not also spontaneous it uh, come to an end quickly when compared to that of natural radioactivity a pie chart showing the different natural and artificial radiation sources we can see is radon which is the dominant source then terrestrial sources cosmogenic sources cosmic rays nucleides in our body consumer products fuels medical just look at it very few a small portion is the artificial radiation the radi uh, artificial radiation source comes uh, like medical and fuel cycle and consumer products they form the artificial radi uh, radiation sources while radionucleates in our body cosmic rays at terrestrial and the radon comes under natural radiation sources and radon is the dominant it forms a large part of uh, in, uh, the entire radiation that exists in our uh, world okay now it comes to the now we come to the uses of radioactivity there are many uses of radioactivity but the beneficial uses are mainly come from the controlled radioactivities that is artificial radioactivity when we can control radioactivity it can be used for many beneficial reasons like we can use it to check organs we can use it in radiotherapy to kill cancer cells it can be used to sterilize food as well as medical equipment it can also be used in industries like for checking the leaks in pipes and for controlling the thickness and etc and uh, the, this radioactivity also has a many causes in our body like these are the biological effects of radiation this diagram shows how a radiation radiation can cause changes in a normal cell how it can cause a cell death how it can cause vital tissue damage neurovascular syndrome hemopoietic syndrome gastrointestinal syndrome how it can make a normal cell carcinogenic it can cause which leads to cancer which can also which can also lead to many genetical issues the nagasaki and hiroshima nuclear bombing is one of the common example of uh, biological drastic effect of radiation we know that after decades have passed till generation future generation of the people who suffered from the uh, nuclear bombing have many genetic defects due to the radiation that was emitted during that time 
such is the power of the radiation it cannot be controlled it passes on to gen uh, generations and generations so thus we come to the end of our presentation we can summarize this portion through this hyperlinks radioactivity and effects these are two links to a youtube video if you are interested you can check it out it is very good and it provides a lot of information on radioactivity and its effect and it's also a summary of what we have discussed till now in this portion of ppt thus we have come to the end of the entire presentation throughout this presentation we have discussed what is nuclear force its discovery its properties the reason behind this the radioactivity what causes radioactivity different types of radioactivity based on its uh, sources as well as others then how it was discovered its units its uses and its drastic effects on body etc so i thank everyone who have who spend their precious time listening to us uh, without your support we couldn't com uh, completed this presentation so thank thanks everyone and have a nice day